Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. As many of you know, and if you don't know, you'll know now, I wrote a book. I've, wrote, I've written several books. Um, I've got a couple novels, but my first real, I guess what I'll call professional development book, was a book called Foundational Networking, Building Know, Like, and Trust to Create a Lifetime of Extraordinary Success. And the premise of the book is, is that to be successful at networking, you really need to have foundational elements. You need to have a, a great attitude. You need to have habits related to yourself, attitude and habits related to yourself and related to others. And I'm not going to go through the whole book here. I've talked about it. Uh, well, I, I talk about it all the time um, without referencing it because it's just for, certainly something I believe in, in that tactics and strategies are nice, but you really need to have that holistic, great attitude, uh, the habits towards contributing to others and being reliable and stuff like that. Get a chance, pick up the book. There's my a plug for my book. Uh, I'm obviously very, uh, I'm very proud of my book. Um, I spent, I released it in 2008. That's when it was finally done. I probably started writing it in 2005. I knew I wanted to write a book for several years, really didn't know where I was going to go with it. Uh, we took a a personal leadership course, and as part of the personal leadership course, you had to set weekly goals, uh, things you were going to do, and one of the weekly goals I had was centered around the book, and okay, I'm going to come up with a title, I'm going to come up with an outline, I'm going to come up with this, and week by week, you know, I'm going to write the, the mission statement for the book, I'm going to do this, and week by week, over the course of about a year and a half, I wrote the book, and it wasn't constant writing. Uh, if you've written a book, you understand. Um, generally, what it was was me um, sitting down once a week. I would come in on a Monday morning, and I would, you know, turn off everything um, and just focus in on four hours of drafting. And then the rest of the week, I would just really be thinking about and outlining what I was going to be doing during that four-hour period. It was very productive, and little dribs and drabs, it added up, and uh, ultimately had a book, and then I had to do a lot of editing and design the cover and all, all sorts of stuff. So I'm certainly very proud of the book. Um, but there are parts of the book, or not parts of the book, but the book in general, where it's not that I'm not proud or ashamed or anything like that, but I wish I would have taken a different approach, if you will. And really... What I'm talking about is, is I wrote a lot of things in here that were what I'll call conjecture. You know, this is my feeling on it, my opinion. And and I'm entitled to an opinion, and I can share my opinion, but it's always stronger when there's a basis for your opinion. Hey, I think this, and this is why I think what I think is is correct. And so I didn't really have any of that in the book, so I'm always excited when I come across things that support my opinion. And if you're, if you're, I guess, a fan of me or fan of the things I talk about, I do tend to get into the lot, a lot of the science of networking, the science of relationships. Well, at any rate, there was a there's a point early on in the book where, and in the in the book is divided into really three sections: your presence, your altruism, and again, your habits and attitudes around those, and your integrity. Those three things. And the first section, uh, presence. Um, there are, I think, 15 different uh, chapters, and, and the second one is called High Expectation, and I actually dedicate the book to my kids, and it harkens to that chapter. I, you know, in, in my dedication, I tell my kids, don't ever forget your greatest day is yet to come. In other words, no matter what you achieve, always have something else out there. I always, always have something, something that you're shooting for because that will lead to more success. And so I explain in the book that that's, you know, that high expectation for yourself serves to attract people to you. Um, and if you stop and you think about it, there's, you know, certainly a lot of truth to it. I mean, who do you, who do you want to hang out with? Do you want to hang out with that 
star quarterback who led the team to the state championship. And that's he's hanging his hat on that glory for the rest of his life. Or do you want to hang out with that person who yeah, may have just been kind of a bench warmer or just kind of a role player, but really is t- taking that experience of, you know, being a role player and becoming somebody special in the corporate world or the entrepreneurial world? Who do you want to be with? And chances are you're probably going to say, well, you know, long term, I want to be with the bench warmer because they're going somewhere. Uh, the the analogy I talk about in the book is I, I use the term, I use the, uh, the analogy or metaphor for stocks. And when, when you're looking to invest in the stock market, you're not looking to buy stocks that have hit their peak. You're not looking to invest in that star quarterback who is, you know, led the team to the state championship and that's it. You're looking to buy a stock where there's appreciable value. That's what you're attracted to. And that's the point I make in the book is is that, you know what, if you want to build your network, if you want to attract really good people to you, then what you need to do is you need to to have that, that high expectation for yourself, that purpose, if you will, that great things are ahead. Your greatest day is yet to come. Align yourself with me because I'm going to be doing good things and my good things are going to spill over to you. And that's what I meant with respect to that chapter. And I, I firmly believe that. I firmly believe is that, well, I look at the people I want to be with. You know, I don't want to be with the person who's, uh, you know, on the, on the, on the, you know, the back nine of their, of their life, uh, of their life, um, you know, going into retirement and, uh, you know, I just, it doesn't energize me. and It doesn't energize most people. Uh, you know, they're, they've left the corporate world. They've left the entrepreneurial world. They don't have contacts. Um, it's not necessarily a great person to align with. I want to align the person who's like, you know, I'm going places. I'm going places. I'm making investments. I'm taking chances. I'm taking risks. I'm learning something new every day, and I want to share it with other people. That's the person I want to be attracted to. And that's the person you want to be, attra- be attracted to as well. Stop and think about it. So I say all that because, again, in the book, it, that's a lot of conjecture. That's my opinion on things. I think there's a strong basis for it, um, but that was my opinion on things. So lo and behold, I come across an article that pretty much supports what I had to say. And it talks about research out there. Um, and what the research basically says is exactly what I said, say. Um and I'll quote from the article, when it comes to attraction, this is from, uh, I, I got this off of uh, the the daily uh, online publication, Cyblog. Um, it's a publication that you, you can subscribe to. Um, and every day they, they're coming out with something new. Yeah, seven days a week, it's something new. Not everything's great from my perspective, but there's always there, there's always something for somebody. It's always cutting edge sort of stuff. And, and um quotes uh, Dr. Patrick Hill, when it comes to attraction, knowing someone has direction matters. We actually seek out people with a purpose. We are looking for people with purpose. We want to align with people who, who, uh, who have purpose, who have a direction, who have a mission, who are going someplace in life. That's who we want to align ourselves with. And one of the other points I make in the book, uh, and I, I go over this over and over and over again, become the person you want to network with. So if you want to network with somebody who has a real sense of purpose, then you need to become the person who has a real sense of purpose because that's going to attract people to you. Wow, Rick's got purpose. You know, Susan's got a heck of a mission. I'm really excited to see where it's going. I'm going to help her. I want to help her, but I want to be there as well because I know it's going to attract other good people and I want to meet those other good people. So, you know, in this, this study uh, was done. They had over 100 participants and they, what they did was they rated the profiles of various people and, and then they took a look at the results. And it was very clear that people with a higher purpose were considered more attractive. And this is true professionally as well as purpose, uh, uh, personally. 
you know people not trying to be sexist here but women are attracted to men who have a purpose who are going to do something you know not attracted to hey i want to just sit home and play video games all day they're attracted to men who have a purpose i want to get out and i want to make partner i want to grow this business i want to have employees i want to set a great example for the kids and likewise, we're attracted to people professionally, the same sorts of things. But here's the interesting thing. Yes, having a purpose will attract people to you like bees to honey. It's, well, I shouldn't say that. Bees make honey. That, I don't know why people say that. It makes, it, uh, it really doesn't make any sense. Bees to flowers. Um, but at any rate, you, anyhow, you get the point. But this is what they also they say. They talk about other research in this article. They say, a sense of purpose is powerful as it's linked to living longer, healthier, and having a happier life. People who experience a greater sense of purpose have a lower risk of Alzheimer's disease, a lower rate of cardiovascular problems, a better memory, and it protects against loneliness. It protects against loneliness because if you have a sense of purpose, even into your 80s and your 90s, you know, I'm not waiting to die. I'm still trying to accomplish something. Now, God may pull the rug out from me underneath me at any point in time, but I'm still trying to accomplish something. I'm trying to help my kids and my grandkids and my community. It's my sense of purpose. People are going to be attracted to that, and you'll have people who will want to be in your life. So have a sense of purpose. It'll make you more attractive. It'll attract more people to you and make you healthier, happier, have a better memory, all those things. So just as I told my kids in the dedication in the book, never stop forgetting your greatest day is yet to come. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.